Good morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. And let's talk about some things that might be useful. Your relationship with your father will change if and when you have kids. Then you realize he was just winging it too. Just like you are as a father, he was winging it. So go easy on him. Pissed at your father? Well, that makes two of you. He knows that you're pissed at him, and he's pissed at himself for that. Three men that changed my life between the ages of 15 and 35. Chuck Smith, Pete Lilback, Chuck Swindoll. Two decades that could have gone really bad if it wasn't for them. Make yourself irreplaceable. The most important thing you're going to hear this morning. Wherever you are, make yourself irreplaceable. In 2018, tech partners are easily replaceable. Content partners, not so easy. The word vegan comes from the ancient Urdu language, which is translated, can't hunt for shit. I just listened and felt Led Zeppelin. How did I do that? I was wearing my bone conduction headphones and I put foam earplugs in my ears when the bone conduction headphones were on my temples. The band was literally inside my head. I was no longer hearing Led Zeppelin. I was feeling them from the inside of my head out. I'm going to put a link for bone conduction headphones. I've tried three or four different pairs. The ones that I settled down on, you are going to love. And you can take phone calls with them and make phone calls with them. They have a microphone that's part of it. But it's very, very discreet. I could be wearing them right now. You wouldn't even know. They wrap around the back of your head and they set right in front of your ears. I never did the foam earplug thing where I isolated the vibrations. You literally feel the music and it's not about loud, loud volume at all. Foolishness does not sharpen iron. Iron sharpens iron. So get away from fools. Distance yourself from foolish people. Get yourself around wise people. Other than Santa or Gandalf, what other characters, what other white-bearded characters can a cosplayer do? Put, put it down below. Give me some ideas. Welcome to the Hotel California. Such a lovely place. Such a lovely face. The Eagles. 1976. Most modern libertarians are addicted to disappointment. Imagine living the next several years, actually planning on bitching and moaning. We had Bill Clinton, because people like me voted for Ross Perot, an independent, libertarian-ish kind of guy, and I sincerely regret casting that vote. Dr. Smith from Lost in Space always had the best insults. Always. I was watching a local, local cable channel show from a local cigar shop called Cigar Time. I probably have more viewers on this show here than they do. Zero production value. 
bad audio, non-scripted, horrible lighting, suspenders and wide ties, guys puffing on cigars and drinking. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. I could watch this show every week. These guys are funny and they're not even trying. Am I the only person who can go to a sunny Caribbean resort by himself and have a good time? Hammocks, sun, swimming, dancing in the club, great dinners, walks, reading, live music, and people watching. If you've never gone on vacation by yourself, let me encourage you to try it. I'm not talking about going off into the wilderness by yourself. I've done that too, where I've gone backpacking, hike five miles back, string up a hammock and just stay at my little site and enjoy the peace and quiet and the animals. I'm talking going to like a resort or a vacation spot by yourself. It's transformative when you spend time by yourself. Are you one of those people that needs to have people around you all the time? I broke myself of that habit many, 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 actually decades ago. And life has been grand. He walks in the house. 95% of the contents are gone. His wife texts him and says the marriage is over. He's clueless, broken, and confused. I was given the privilege of having him in my chair at this specific time in his life and be the first listening ear. When you cut hair in a private, upscale hair studio the way that I do, it comes with great responsibility. People come to you weighed down with life. Then you know that it was meant to be. It's supposed to be you. They're supposed to encounter you. It's no coincidence. If I was working in a salon amongst all the other hairdressers, people wouldn't open up. It would be like, so how you doing? What's new? It wouldn't be the deep talk. And you know if you've sat in the chill chair, which is what I've named my chair at my private upscale men's grooming studio within a salon, you'll know you can talk about anything. And people do. It's common for me to hand somebody tissues because tears start rolling. If that happens to you, it's supposed to be. It was ordained. You are, you are the shoulder to lean on. You bear great responsibility in keeping your mouth shut and doing nothing but listening to that person's pain, confusion, and brokenness. It's supposed to be. It's a privilege being the first listening ear when someone's in pain. With that comes great responsibility. I was told by my sources that Rocky Patel gets his, most of his cigar tobacco from Pennsylvania, Lancaster and York counties to be exact. Cultivation of tobacco in Pennsylvania took off after the, after the American Civil War. Pennsylvania growers found their place in the market by growing tobacco. In Lancaster County, it also fit neatly with the cattle economy, since manure feeds the nutrient-demanding tobacco crop. It also provided work for large farm families. Pennsylvania tobacco rode the wave of cigar popularity into the 20th century. The common name for a cigar is Stogie. You've heard that. It's derived from the Lancaster County town of Conestoga. In response to shrinking farm sizes, many Lancaster County farmers turned to tobacco because no other crop generated so much income from so little space. I feel the same way about hemp. 
States need to get on board with hemp. One of the most useful plants on the face of this earth, hemp. Wake up, states. Anyone who has any evangelical, Christian, Puritan-ish ideas about hemp, you're all paranoid about the drug stuff. Paranoid. Let it go. Let that shit go. Hemp is useful. If you say to me tomorrow, oh, what fun it would all be, then what's to stop us, pretty baby? But what is, and what should never be? Led Zeppelin, 1969. I don't need to reinvent Christianity. I like the two creeds, the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed. They sum up what I believe. I don't need to reinvent America. The Constitution sums up what is successful and what works. It's all about your world view. Embrace, embrace the documents and the process that went into creating them. Common creeds unite people. The Apostles or the Nicene Creed. In politics, it's the Constitution. If your view of it that uh, of it is that it was written by a bunch of racist, bigoted, old white guys, then you'll disrespect it and want to change it. If you believe it protects everyone and is a good standard, then it frees you. It doesn't bind you. It's freeing. Thieves and con men know they can't just walk in through the front door. So they get in through windows back doors and other areas more vulnerable and where you think they won't. What are your vulnerabilities, also known as blind spots? Chances are that other people can identify your blind spots. You know what you need? You need a vulnerability audit. Ethiopian baby. It's interesting and a little sad that displaying an American flag is a euphemism for Republicans in liberal neighborhoods. I taught the psychology of personality at the college level. And there's this thing called individuation. When one party separates from another and forms its own identity, children separate from parents and become their own individual person. Husbands and wives. A wife is not owned by the husband. She has her own life. She has jobs. She has hobbies. She has a purpose. She has a mission, if she's not raising children, obviously. And she is separate from her husband. Employees and companies. Employees are supposed to be individuals. Groupthink and individuals. When the individual leaves groupthink, that's individuation. Seek individuation, not enmeshment. Separate from the pack. Boring social media accounts say, look how smart I am. Effective social media accounts. You are the smart one with insane potential. You, my watcher, and I can help you develop that even further. Are you boring or are you effective? With some Instagram accounts, I can't tell if it's owned by a man or a woman because there's so many couples' selfies. I can't tell where one ends and the other begins. 
interesting juxtaposition when I just got done talking about individuation. But some people can't seem to separate themselves. If, um, and I'm speaking to men and women here, but let's just talk to men just for a second. If a man keeps saying, I can't live without her, or I don't know what I would do without her, men, listen up. When she's gone, you won't know how to live without her. You won't know what to do without her. So don't train yourself to fail and train yourself to die if she splits. Just that alone is going to save your life and save you years of struggle. The first openly gay, whatever, congressman, senator, judge, CEO, I don't give up about your sexual choices. What you do or what you don't do with a penis. We all have our propensities and we all have our preferences. Give me an openly qualified person. Your sexuality cannot trump qualifications. Give me a qualified person. I don't care what they do behind their bedroom doors. When people are posting that or bragging about that, run in the other direction. That means they're just ineffective. If the number one thing on your resume is that I am a XYZ, distance yourself from them. Ineffective losers. Get away from them and don't elect them and don't reward that kind of behavior. Take an hour and study the highlights of this topic, the death of Sears department stores as related to the birth of Amazon. The personal branding lessons that you're going to learn will blow your mind. The death of Sears, the birth of Amazon. What one did wrong, what one did right. I've been compared to the most interesting man in the world, character. Okay, I get that. White hair and white beard. But it ends there. I'm not the most interest, interesting man in the world. I'm the most interested man in the world. And I'm interested in you. It's not about me. It's about you. You can always get money back after losing, but you can't get time back. You can make up for lost money, but you can never make up for lost time. It's always better to have more work than time. Fame and fortune are two completely different things. Fame does not lead to fortune unless you monetize it. You can have a shitload of followers, likes, and hearts, and all that stuff. But until people pull out their credit card and one, order, two, reorder, or three, subscribe, you still have time to waste. Remember when politicians actually had ideas and debated and won and lost on the platforms of ideas? Not how much shit you can give away or guilt because we need a blank in that office. You cannot compete with Santa Claus. Rush Limbaugh. The old Democrats trip over each other to give away free shit. The old Republicans trip over each other telling people they can keep their shit. The new Democrat and Republican parties? Culture issues. The first whatever. Identity platforms. Zero ideas. When it comes to dating sites, have you ever seen the phrase 
a few extra pounds. What they forgot to put in there was a few dozen extra pounds. <coughs> what is the best window of time to eat for intermittent fasting? 28% said 12 hours. 43% said 8 hours. 29% said 6 hours. So it looks like 43%, the winner is 43% said intermittent, fast, intermittent fasting is best done during an eight hour window of time. In other words, you eat from six in the morning to two in the afternoon and that is it. The other 16 hours are fasting or start your, have your breakfast at eight and eat what you want till four. After that, no eating. That's intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting in two sentences. You don't have a debt problem. You have an income problem. You're not going to un-Starbucks yourself. You're, you're not going to un-Starbucks yourself to being a millionaire. It's not going to happen. Even the fucked up politicians who say mandatory voter ID is wrong still have to show their ID when they go to an airport. That's precisely why you know that they're full of shit. Assuming everyone is a legal citizen at the polls is like assuming everyone is not carrying sharp objects or explosives when at the airport. I went to my dermatologist Got a few things cut, zapped, and burnt off of me at the front desk. She says, I need your insurance card and two forms of ID. Showed her my insurance card, my driver's license, and some other ID that I have in my money clip. I said, why do you need that? She says, just to show that you are who... And she said it very casually. Just, just to show that you are who you say you are. Ding! Light bulb moment. Be unapologetic in what you do. Why? Because apologies and constantly apologizing shows up in your body language. Reminds me, the guy says to a girl at a bar, hey, you know, we should get together sometime. You know, maybe you can give me your phone number. And she says, oh, I have a boyfriend. Or I'm married. And he goes, oh, I'm sorry. Dude, never fucking apologize for being a man. Never apologize for being a man. You're not sorry that she has a boyfriend. You're not sorry that she's married. Be a man. Man up to that. It's a fact. If she's married and she chooses to remain faithful or has a boyfriend and chooses to remain faithful, well, I have my opinions and theories about people who have just boyfriends, women who just have boyfriends. I'll share that during another video. But don't apologize. No more. I'm sorry. Get that out of your language. You are not sorry. You will no longer be sorry for being who you are. Never. Once you go cheap, you can't go uncheap. Don't focus on what makes you fit into a group. Focus on what makes you stand out of the group. When it comes to career opportunity, career opportunities, don't focus on what makes you fit in, how well you fit in, how well you're part of a trend. Focus on what makes you stand out. That's why this channel is different than every other channel that you listen to and watch. You live in America and you voted? And you got a sticker that says, I voted? Good for you. 
You're supposed to vote. I took a shit today. Where's my sticker that says, I shit today? Don't brag about crap that you're supposed to, that you're already supposed to be doing. Just think of all the gas and cocktail money you'd save by not going to networking groups. Put that money to Facebook ads and SEO ranking. Money much better spent. You go to a networking group, think about this. You spend money on gas to get there. You go there and you buy a couple drinks. You might have an appetizer. Okay, so when the night is done, there's 40 bucks. Gone. Where could that money be better used? Spend 40 bucks on Facebook ads or promoting yourself somewhere, boosting a post somewhere. The return on your investment will be so much more. Stop wasting time. There's a right way and a wrong way to run networking groups. They don't run themselves. There has to be a balance of structure and free, free form meet and greet time. Too much structure and people zone out, especially after a long day at work. No structure just leads to delusional people who just wander in, wander out, and they wonder why they're there. Most networking groups, no matter the industry, are a complete waste of time and, at best, just something to do after work. I have been to literally dozens of after-work networking groups <coughs> for over 30 years. If you get any business or name recognition or it contributes to your income, <coughs> excellent, fantastic, good for you. But most of them are a waste of time. Galileo said, I never met a man so ignorant that I couldn't learn something from him. I believed that until yesterday on Twitter. I encountered somebody so ignorant that I couldn't learn something from them. Companies owe you nothing except their great product or service, and then the free market takes care of the rest. What don't some people understand about that? The sole purpose of a company is to create customers and profit. What the company owners and stockholders do with that money is up to them, no matter how big or small the company. If a CEO makes a boatload of money, good for him. Fake compassion. Until you say something they disagree with, then that compassion becomes verbal, legal, and physical aggression. And I've never been wrong on that. Some people should use a glue stick instead of a chapstick. Putting the Bible on the bench and taking oath on it in a courtroom is a mockery of God and the Holy Bible. My attorney, during my divorce and custody stuff, said, just tell the truth, just tell the truth. I did, to my peril. No lies, no exaggeration, no accusations, literally nothing but the truth. And the judges still treat you like a liar. Something needs to be done. Do not get involved in the court system if you can't, men. You will always lose. Always lose. I had a friend that used to say, there's her side of the story, there's your side of the story, and then there's the truth. Bullshit. Sometimes you do have the right side. If you're not bullcrapping yourself and you tell the truth, Sometimes right is right, and wrong is wrong. None of this compromise. It's not like the truth is somewhere in the middle. That's a nice phrase. That belongs on a bumper sticker. That's a nice meme. But it's not always the best thing to do. It's better to hear the cold, hard truth now than to experience it later. 7 out of 10 women will tell you that their ex was abusive. And your ex 
is telling another man right now that you're abusive. When a woman says that her last guy was too possessive, that means she still had a lot of to do. When she tells you that, remember what I told you. And that's going to be it for the day. Hope you have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Hit the thumbs up button. Forward the video to someone who you think would benefit from this information. And let me know what is the thing that just grabbed you. Sometimes I say things that just come out of the screen and just grab you and shake you. What is the one thing that spoke to you today? I'm looking forward to hearing it. Have a great day, man. See you tomorrow.